if your cause is right, doesn't mean we're 100% right. We're going in the right direction. If you're looking for the truth and you don't shut up and you never quit and you can't be shut down and you don't care what people say to you and you never go away, nothing on earth can stop you and that's why they're scared of you. Woo! They're scared of you because you carry the light of truth and honor and everything that's good in your soul. And when you turn that loose, there's nothing on this planet that can stop you. Now, I go back to this. When you have no shame, when you're not afraid, when you don't care what people say about you who are scared, want to keep in their little, little, their little comfort boxes, when you get outside of that, it is so enlightening, it is so empowering, it is so fulfilling. And as this spirit of liberty spreads, as people discover their own innate personal power and their own tie-in to the overall human destiny and something much larger, there's no amount of propaganda, there's no amount of slick semantics, there's no amount of divide and conquer, there's no amount of left-right paradigm that can stop you. And that's my overall message. Look, I'm just some guy 17 years ago who woke up to corruption. And I have a thimble's worth of information compared to what I have now. If I'm still alive 10 years from now, I'll be blessed, but I'll, I'll, I'll have even more knowledge than I have now. It doesn't even matter that we all you know, have all the answers. None of us do. Anybody that tells you they do is a liar. It's that we have common sense, we know things are going in the wrong direction, and we're simply saying no. I control my own destiny. I am not your slave, and I'm not going along with this agenda because my gut. Because my gut, because my instinct, everything I am tells me we're going in the wrong direction. Uh, I remember being on the air 15 years ago, been away for about 17, but 15 years ago, local access TV in Austin, around for a local radio show. And I remember the death threats and the attacks and the city attempting to keep me off access television. I remember all those things happening. And it didn't matter because I knew that I was standing up for the truth. And people who made fun of me, people who laughed at me, people that made jokes, I didn't, I didn't get hurt by that. I felt sorry for them because I knew I wasn't the sharpest knife in the drawer. I knew, you know, that my elevator didn't go all the way to the top. Nobody's perfect. I knew that I didn't have all the answers. And I felt so sorry for them that they couldn't even see what was plain. What a moron like me could see, they couldn't inherently understand that truth. Because this isn't, at the end of the day, about intelligence. This is about guts. This is about intuition. This is about discernment. This is about being tuned in to the truth. And when you simply switch your channel to the truth, you don't need Alex Jones to tell you anything. I'm just getting people to tune over to the truth, to open their eyes up, to look around them, to, to ask themselves, is what's happening a good thing or is it a bad thing? And that's all I want people to do is to realize there's more going on around them than what Fox and CNN said. Thank you! And that's the key. If you simply start questioning and you take little steps, the incredible effect, the power of just getting a neighbor to think for themselves, of just getting a neighbor to value liberty and freedom, maybe one-tenth that they value the World Series coming up uh, with the Giants and the Rangers, to get them to, to, to appreciate being involved in the real process that is the human experience. To just get them to buy a simple mirror. Now we'll be here. People can't hear me? <laughs> the problem is this microphone doesn't go on this right here. What'd you say? Well, that's upsetting. People can't hear me? Uh, yeah, it's very upsetting. Some folks are saying that. Yeah. We, hear you loud and clear. we hear you loud and clear, Alex. Can you hear me? Folks up there in the top. 
All right, I'll sit here and hold this microphone. Crazy <laughs> yeah. Woo! Well, hell, I'm upset now. You guys in the balcony couldn't hear me? Oh, let me hear them. I don't worry, I'm not going to repeat it. Hey, can you guys hear me up there? Could you hear me earlier? Yeah. Okay, good. What well, doesn't fit in here? Won't fit in there. Hey, that's an idea. Duct tape that sucker. I just hate holding a microphone. So. Bring back this. The people who knock down those buildings are going to hear you too. The people that knock down those buildings aren't just going to hear me, brother. They're going to hear you. Yeah! Woo! Now, this guy taking this and putting it on YouTube or doing his own videos, he's going to reach millions of people. Yeah! All right. All right, all right. I'll, I'll continue. Let me hook up this other microphone. I gotta do all this technical stuff or they'll get mad at me. I got a whole bunch of microphones up here. No, no, listen, I'll be honest with you before I get to you. And then, and then your, your questions. I was about to say your phone calls. <laughs> before I go any further, I've been holding is, for two hours. Seriously, seriously, though. It is humbling to be here with you today. And it's humbling to just be able to interact with people and to have folks travel from all over to hear me. Uh, because, again, I just see myself as an average person, but in that averageness, I realize the overall power that all of us have together. And that's what's special. It's all of us here tonight saying no to the tyranny. We're not going to lay down, and we're going to go out and wake up everybody we can to this dehumanizing agenda. Yo. I want to say something to all the great security people and police that are here. I, uh, I felt like I was carrying the nuclear football. Or nuclear, as George W. Bush would say. The codes. From uh, Kenny Bumport, Maine. Uh, I, uh, seriously, I like pulled up and it was like, they were rushing me in here. And, 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 and I do appreciate them. And that speaks to compartmentalization. You know, I, I see the national media and I see how they show all these police brutality videos. And if you just go back five years ago, I would get very, very upset by those. And, and, and those are wrong on a case-by-case -case basis. But then I began to read more of the declassified psychological warfare manuals and things out there, and I began to understand that at a limited level, I'd actually played into the globalist plan. And, and all of us do. None of us are perfect. The fact is we're moving in the right direction. You know, a lot of people don't get politically involved because they want to have it perfectly developed before they say anything or do anything. The truth is we're not perfect and it's in that imperfection that's the beauty of our species. But then I began to read the psychological warfare manuals and I also read a lot of the training they gave the SS, uh, Hitler's Gestapo and they liked early on in 1933 once Hitler was in power to have their police go out and do abusive things so that the public would then, at least segments of them, start to hate them. And then as the public began to start hating the police, that's what they wanted. They wanted the police to feel like they were in their own group. They were in their own separate organization. The Nazis called it the cement of blood. But they were Germans. They were people too. And the secret here is that police are compartmentalized just like everybody else. They're human beings as well. And over the years, I've had police send me so many documents, the MIAC and Homeland Security reports and countless others, where the government is training to take on gun owners and libertarians and conservatives and anti-war activists. None of this has to do with Al-Qaeda. Over 90% of the training deals with the American people. And I begin to understand the type of programming that the police and the military uh, had gone under. And to, to simply reach out to them and show them the larger picture, just like I'm doing the public, you know, the general public, so that they can make a decision for themselves which side of history they're standing on. Because the truth is, they shop at the same grocery stores. They go to the same churches and mosques and synagogues. They go to the same ball games. They have hopes and dreams for their children, just like we do. And if we can address them as fellow men and women, 
and show them how they've been conditioned and show them how the system has fostered crime and corruption and to show them the choices they have, nine times out of ten, they will make the decision to join free humanity. Now, that said, and anybody can search this out of Maryland or even Los Angeles, for more than 15 years, they try as hard as they can to not hire any police officers with 100 IQ or higher. Now, why are they doing that? Because they don't want people that are going to question. They don't want people that are going to see deception. They don't want people who are going to question corruption. But in that microcosm of the government on record, I, I talked to a lot of people who are like, man, I got two degrees and I played rugby, but I didn't get hired as a cop. Well, it's because you got 140 IQ, stupid. <laughs> <laughs> you think they want a, a warrior of that caliber with a big brain who actually wants to protect people? Because a real man, a real woman, doesn't want to be a bully. They want to help people. Somebody with real power is ashamed to exercise it against people that don't deserve it. And, and the system knows that. But listen, they're not just trying to hire police with under 100 IQs. They're not just trying to do that. That's why they put the sodium fluoride in your water. That's reduced the IQ of upwards of 20 points in the last 50 years. Oh, yeah. The U.S. is lethargic for no reason. They're not just adding mercury to the shots to brain damage our children by accident. They don't, they're not just trying to hire police that aren't the sharpest knife in the drawer. They want us all to be dull. They want us all to be dumbed down. They want us all to be drugged because they understand the innate power that all of us have within us. And so we need to come together and have that message of fraternity and brotherhood and sisterhood and lay out the choices because they train a lot of people, corporate bureaucrats, lawyers, police, you name it, a corporate hatchet men, corporate hatchet women to feel like they're part of a special group, an elite group, you know, that, that's, uh, that knows better and is doing all of this. And at the end of the day, if you actually study the globalist program, you understand that 99.9% .9 of us are in the same boat. It doesn't matter if you're black. It doesn't matter if you're white. It doesn't matter if you're Hispanic. It doesn't matter if you're Asian, Native American. It doesn't matter if you're a preacher. It doesn't matter if you're a cop. It doesn't matter if you're a school teacher, an auto mechanic, a guy that sells auto parts. It doesn't matter if you're a psychologist. It doesn't matter who you are. You are under attack. And the globalists are trying to create the maps that your mind is supposedly going to follow. They are trying to control and restrict your reality so they can blind you from the wider world. They are trying to pull the wool over your eyes. They are trying to blind you from this world that isn't a matrix yet, but is designed to become one. And that gets in to the end game. I remember seeing a document from the 1970s declassified in February of 2000. This is a few years after the first Matrix movie had come out. And I remember being on an army server, reading a public document. And this sounds crazy, but you can pull it up. It's in one of my earlier films. And they said, in the future, it's our job to end all conflict. And how are we going to end all conflict? All humans will live in tanks with wires hooked into their brains. And we will all be part of a large, basic hive mind Sounds crazy. It's not me. It's the Army saying it. Federation of American Scientists actually released it, and the Army said reclassify it. The matrix is actually what they want to do. Now, that doesn't mean that that's real or could happen. That's up for debate. The point is, these people are trying 